everyone. Welcome back. Or welcome in, if it's your first time. Um, yeah, hi. <laughs> Happy time zone. I hope everyone's doing well. As you might be able to tell from my voice, I am a little bit sick. <laughs> Still. Uh, but we have a model to finish. So I'm going to be... Uh, going to be working on that today. Um, I should hopefully finish that today. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to get back into it. This is the Escher Chimerics that we were working on last time. Um, so it's going to be a lot of detailing, a lot of highlighting, that kind of thing today. Um, maybe a little bit of detail on the base. I don't know. We'll see where we get to. Um, but yeah. Been, if it's, it feels like it's been ages. I know I always say this, but it always does feel like it's been ages. I want to stream more often, but the usual, <laughs> you know. There's only 24 hours in a day, unfortunately. Uh, right. So. trying to reacquaint myself with this model that I've not touched for a week so that I, I can actually do a decent job of painting it. <clears throat> Alrighty. So first things first, I'm gonna uh, tidy up what we've already done. So there's gonna be a couple of bits like uh, Let's find detail around the mouth and all that sort of thing. Just tidying it up. Um, making sure any details I've missed are covered and sorted out. And then we'll move on to highlights and all that jazz. But the tidying up step is important because firstly it helps me get my focus back into painting. Which is always good. It's kind of like a nice little warm up thing. Uh, but also, just makes the model look better at the end. So, first things first, I'm just going to open my mouth. Hey, Elsie! Welcome in! I hope you're well. You're the first one in! <laughs> You're the first one in, as far as I know. It's good to see you. I hope you're keeping well. I am very, very, very tired and a little bit sick, I think. Maybe. Hopefully not, but... I miss, I miss dreaming and I miss painting. So, I'm here. And I'm going to spend the rest of the day either writing or playing Baldur's Gate, so... I can deal with it. <laughs> I hope you're well. I hope you've recovered from, uh, from PAX. I hope you have... Oh, no, wait, you went at PAX. Sorry. I hope you've had a good weekend. Or a good week. I was at a wedding yesterday, um, which you may have seen. There was a steam train at the wedding, and I think some of that steam laced with coal found its way into my lungs. Because, uh, ow, my lungs hurt today. Indy! No worries, I hope the Indy goes well. Have fun. It's also gotten super, super cold uh, over the past like 24 hours. It, it's gone from about 
you know, 15-ish degrees to 4. So I am not liking the sudden cold snap because my body just kind of screams at me. <laughs> uh, your body's a bit sore from gym and you mowed your yard yesterday. Nice. Congratulations. How is the gym going for you? I hope it's still going well. I remember you saying that you were, you were kicking butt at the gym. I'm not going to lie, I was listening to Sam Bayout, who plays Karlak in Baldur's Gate. I was listening to them talk about uh, being a gym inspiration. 100%. Karlak is my new gym inspiration. So thank you, Larian, for giving me that. I needed something like that. Need a new PV. Oh my gosh. 12 hours at 340 in uh, Indy. Oh my god. I'm I can't read today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ozzy, that's incredible. Leg days are a pain, but you're making such good progress, Ozzy. That is insane. I'm so proud of you. Like, genuinely. Like, I don't mean that to sound condescending or anything, but I am so damn proud of you. Because that is awesome. It's genuinely incredible. Also, it genuinely makes me want to try and match it. <laughs> I want to try and match it with you. Like it, it's making me want to go to the gym and work out and be as good. So thank you as well for giving me that motivation. You are not a piece of shit, Ozzy. Don't you dare say that about my friend. Don't you bloody dare. Awesome. Genuinely proud of you. Uh, I'm I'm very, very happy for you, Ozzy. I hope the gym continues to serve you well. Because my, my partner's been off sick all week with pneumonia, and I've been off sick all week with uh, fibromyalgia. <laughs> so I'm just sat here and everything is a mess. <laughs> and I'm we're both tired and bleh. <laughs> so <laughs> if I sound a bit worn out, it's, it's been a long week. Join <laughs> it, get emotional. You're allowed to be proud of your progress along the way, I see. And you deserve to be proud of your progress. Get some rest. Don't forget to hydrate. Thank you. Promise I am staying well hydrated. And yeah, we're, we're both okay. We're both just taking it easy. But uh, yeah, it's been a been a week here. So that's why I've not been around much this week. Because uh, obviously sick partner and sick myself not a good combination for trying to be able to stream <laughs> funnily enough <laughs> but I'm hoping I can get back to streaming next week because I missed it I missed streaming I missed chatting with <clears throat> excuse me excuse me my voice is already giving up today. Uh, <laughs> I miss chatting and spending time with everyone. First week back from holidays. Oh, it's the worst. The absolute worst. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm already dreading having to go back to work soon. I might end up with another week off. I've got to talk to the doctors tomorrow and see what they say. But, um... Yeah, it, I hate that, that first day or two back after you've been away for a while. Always rough. No one ever wants to do that. You have my empathy, Ozzy. But I hope work in general is going well for you. Even if it's a bit... A bit rough at the moment. I mean, I know it's it's only been a week since I streamed last. And I know I don't stream, like, every day like some people do. But this is still my main way to keep in touch with everyone. Um, and yeah, I love, I love my little community. I love this community. A strict no dickheads allowed policy. <laughs> In good news, my uh, my tattoo is almost healed already. I'm not streaming as much. Oh. Hey, Ozzy, you're always welcome here. Always and forever. You are one of the people that encouraged me to do this in the first place. There is never going to be a time when you're not welcome. Um, and yeah, like, streaming, confidence with streaming is a funny thing, because I still don't really have that much confidence, but I don't, <laughs> it's funny, I don't really see these streams as streams, if that makes sense. I see them as me doing something while talking to a bunch of my friends. So, like, it kind of is weird. Like, my brain disconnects the whole, this is a stream that's going out on Twitch and it's going to be uploaded to YouTube thing. And it's just more like, hey, I'm going to sit here in pain and, like, there's a chat that I can talk to full of lovely people that I, I know and get on with. Just probably indica indicative of how few, pe few new people find the stream. And that I don't think many new people find these streams. And I'm fine with that because I like who we've got here. Yeah, I've kind of, I wouldn't say given up, but I've kind of refocused my ambitions when it comes to streaming. Because I think I spent a little too much energy worrying about the profitability in the future and all this sort of thing. And honestly, now I'm like, this is a hobby. I'm just gonna leave it as a hobby. A hobby that I will take more seriously than any hobby I've ever had. But honestly, I don't think I'm cut out to be a full-time streamer. At least not alongside regular work. And I've got passions and things that can lead me elsewhere. I'm going to focus on the writing. Because uh, the the feeling that I get when I am writing is unlike anything I have ever experienced. And it took a long time for me to work out that that is what I needed. So, so the, I will say, streams are not going to change. <laughs> I'm just not going to worry about growing as a streamer. It just takes the pressure off. Um, Sigorbjorn just subscribed. Oh, 31 months so now. <laughs> How are you doing, Jinxie? Oh my god. 31 months? That does it. That's that's a lot of months. Hey. 
Hey, Yannick, welcome in. And thank you for the codes, by the way. I'm sorry I didn't reply to your message earlier. Um, I My brain is like Swiss cheese at the moment. Um, but thank you so much for those codes. I'll definitely make sure they get put to good use. Uh, I'm doing okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm, uh, my, you might be able to tell that I'm a little under the weather in terms of health, but otherwise I'm good, thank you. Kind of mind blown by the 31 months, because that's a lot of months. And it doesn't feel like that many months. <laughs> so thank you so much, I appreciate it. New channel of YouTube model, that's fair. <clears throat> I think if I was starting again, um, I probably wouldn't, <laughs> if I'm honest. And I look at the landscape now of trying to, like for people who actually want to grow and want to do this full time. And unless I had the ability to completely give up my day job just to dedicate to streaming, I wouldn't do it. Because honestly, that that is um, that is the main thing that has always held me back. I have to put so much energy into my day job that I don't have as much left over for this, for streaming, for anything really. That I would like as a, I don't have as much as I'd like to give. And I think unless you have the capability to give that that insane amount of dedication. Uh, in this current in the current environment I think the rest of it is just sheer luck um, so yeah kind of sad in a way but at the same time it's kind of freed me from putting so much pressure on myself to do well at this game at this whole content creation shtick because it was taking away the enjoyment of streaming for me. And if the opportunity arises to go full time, I'm not going to turn it down, but I'm not going to pursue it as the end goal for streaming anymore. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then I'll be content with the wonderful, amazing people that I'm lucky enough to call my friends because that is enough of a blessing as it is. Uh, if you have anyone who would like the quarry, uh, the quarry um, is definitely something I'm interested in. <laughs> it's been on my wish list since it came out, but I had to take it off because my wish list was getting full and I was pursuing indie games a lot. <laughs> But it's been on my radar for a long time. I I'm definitely interested in the quarry, if you're not going to use the key. Um, and if I'm free on Halloween, I'll stream the quarry on Halloween. As a, a break from Baldur's Gate for everyone. Because <laughs> currently it's, it's either going to be a horror game or it's going to be Dark Urge time on the channel for Halloween. No, the, the Quarry is a great game. I've, I've watched a few people play bits of it. But seriously, thank you. Like, you don't, please don't feel obliged to give, give anything. If it's not going to be used. <clears throat> Did you pass it as? <laughs> yes. Yeah. She, she's, she's getting better, but it's it's been a rough week or two. That's why I'm also trying not to get too loud. Because uh, my partner's asleep. <laughs> I don't want to wake her up. Oh, Trace. <laughs> well, I will. I will be more than happy to give them a home. 
Thank you very much. And if I can't use him, thank you. <laughs> I just got the message. And if I can't put them to good use, I will make sure they find a good home. But I will probably, I will almost certainly use the quarry because I've, I've wanted to play that game for a good long while. It's a deluxe edition as well. Damn. Thank you. I'm getting spoiled. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, I'm accidentally dual wielding paintbrushes there. That was confusing. challenge mode here. I'm just adding some muscle definition in on the uh, Chimerix because I wasn't really happy with how it was looking. So the Chimerix is going to the gym and I'm hoping it doesn't look too weird when it settles. Uh, order Uber Eats for some treats. Uh, if you feel the need for treats, Ozzy, I fully endorse that. Treats are great. And you deserve all the good things in your life. But I would also say, games count as treats. And there is a wonderful game waiting for you to start playing. Because <laughs> I am going to encourage as many people as I can to play Builder's Gate. Mainly because I don't think there is a single person I've seen who's started playing this game and gone, nah, I don't get it. Like, as soon as people start playing this game, they're like, oh, I totally get this now. <clears throat> uh, ooh, Death Rewind, Gorefast. Visual filter pack. Oh. Oh. That's cool. I look forward to checking it out then. Alright, I look forward to checking out the quarry. That is awesome. Sounds like I can make my own horror movie in the game, which is just fantastic. What a concept as well. Like, using cutscenes and features in a game to make your own movie. I wonder if anyone's actually attempted that. Maybe not cutscenes, but you know what I mean. It's listening to the bad stories that were stuck in a basin. Oh no, Indy! <laughs> you just start rolling constitution checks to see if he sends you to sleep. Or to send, if the bard sends you to sleep, sorry. You've got it already. Oh, Ozzy. I can't wait for you. I, I just can't wait for you to start playing because I, I just want to see your reaction. <laughs> I want you to fully appreciate how good this game is. <clears throat> uh, 
Ooh, 80s throwback character outfits. And fil ooh, film green, VHS aesthetic, or blast black and white. Oh, that is cool. No, I'm fairly sure most people would know this, but um, I'm actually a big fan of awful, awful horror films. Like, I like the good ones too, but the really crappy B-movie that takes itself too seriously but is so bad you can't stop laughing at it. Uh, like, the really cheesy, like, over-the-top, ridiculous kind of horror films that are just god-awful. Honest to God, terrible films in every which way. I, I just have such a soft spot for them. And I don't, I'm not going to explain it because I couldn't, but I love terrible horror films so much. Um, mainly because I just, I'm so desensitized to horror as well. Um, yeah, I was reading Stephen King at 10 years old, <laughs> so I think that kind of ruined me for horror in general. Um... And I love terrible horror films. I love horror as a genre. Almost as much as I love, you know, high fantasy, but not quite as much. I've had to pick. So that that sounds great, and I, I'm genuinely excited to get my teeth into the, the, the quarry. Okay, Ozzy. I will say, by all means, stream it if you want to. If you are playing Baldur's Gate for the first time, I wholeheartedly recommend just playing it. Don't worry about streaming it. Don't let chat or any random wandering in distract you from this game. The only reason I'm streaming Baldur's Gate now is because I've got a playthrough under my belt. So I, I've got one version of this story that I was able to enjoy without distraction, without anyone trying to tell me how to play it without any spoilers or anything like that. Now, I, I thoroughly recommend just having a go through it on your own. Even if you do like a side by side, so you have a stream playthrough and a non-stream playthrough, but just genuinely give yourself a chance to really enjoy this game because it the game deserves it and you deserve it too. Like, you owe it to yourself to give this game a good chance. I don't normally get this riled up about games, but Baldur's Gate is a special case. <clears throat> Can't really send horror movies or games. That's fair. I know horror. Horror is one of those genres that is really not for everyone, and I completely get that. But I, I'm one of those people who likes. Uh, I like the terrible horror movies. I love cheesy, goofy monster movies and creature features and all that sort of thing. Um, but I, I also love like the really intense uh, psychology that you see in horrors, like even stuff like Saw, which I would argue is, yes, it falls into the horror genre, but it's not a hor horrific film. It's just gory. But I love the psychology of the traps and things like that. So, you know. I get into horror. What can I say? And to stream playthrough and private playthrough. Good. 
scared. I get that. I've got like a dozen different playthroughs, all with wildly different backgrounds and styles to them, and I'm still not bored. <laughs> I, I, I'm still finding things that are brand new and surprising and just yeah the, this game has my whole heart <laughs> I should buy an energy drink okay I'm gonna sound like a hypocrite because I'm literally drinking energy drink right now don't do it Ozzy you're stronger than this <laughs> don't do it you deserve better <laughs> Paranormal PI. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, is that a is that a TV show? I feel like I've seen some of it. It sounds familiar. Is it game? <laughs> yeah, I'm starting my day. <laughs> I'm having having an energy drink instead of coffee because I I needed a cold drink. But yeah, don't buy the energy drink. Go to sleep if you need to, Ozzy. You're allowed to go to bed whenever you feel tired. Don't let anyone tell you when you should be sleeping. Oh, it's a game. <laughs> I don't know. It sounded. It sounds familiar. Um. So it's like Phasma without the dying. You say. So you still have the ghost that that hunts you and all that sort of thing, or the the creature that hunts you. repainting the face on this guy a little bit because it, it looked quite messy and I didn't like how it was turning out. And I will say like every single one of my models is a little guy. <laughs> I don't, don't I don't know why it's just the way I refer to my models. He's just a little guy. Fair enough. That's fair enough, Ozzy. Now, one of the things I do want to watch is uh, it's completely different. It is Rome. I keep getting it recommended to me recently. And it sounds cool. But trying to find it on streaming platforms is a pain in the butt. But I did classics at school, so I'm actually kind of fascinated with uh, Rome and you know the, that era of history. I see it goes trying to find the relics to release them. Oh, that's cool. Demons will attack you and the ghosts keep them from being released. That's really cool. So yeah, like you said, it's kind of like Phasma with, with a couple of extra steps. Not to talk down to the game at all, because it does sound genuinely quite fun. But obviously for the sake of comparison... Sweeping souls make flight with the 
I don't know, tis the season for spookums and interesting things. So, my, uh, my watch history kind of goes haywire at this point. Ooh, false readings, that's cool. That's one of the things that kind of bothers me in, in Phasmo in that, at least when I was playing it, it was very uh, formulaic in a way. It didn't feel like you had a lot of freedom. It was like, find this clue, find that clue, find clue number three. Look, here you go, here's your monster. Good job, off you go. <laughs> And get snacks? No worries, Ozzy. Take it easy. Drive safe. Um, and I hope you find some tasty snacks. This song lives in my head. <laughs> I love this song. I think anyone who's played Baldur's Gate also has the same problem. It's the best kind of problem to have, though. It's like, oh no, I have a really friggin' good song stuck in my head. Whatever will I do? Guess I'll have to keep listening to it. This is a more about the investigation. Oh, that's good. Four different types of ghosts which you can differentiate. That sounds good. I like I like the idea of that. Cause that's the thing, in most ghost stories, the investigation is kind of the interesting bit. Like, don't get me wrong, the ghost ghosts are cool. But eh. <laughs> Drive through Maccas. No, Ozzy, be good. <laughs> I, I'm cheering you on because I know that you're tempted and you're trying to resist because you're trying to eat better and you're trying to get healthier. So resist the temptations. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> you can guess the chef is there. Oh, okay. You won't even release the guys. Also, it's, it's like a multi-stage... So what, is there like multiple nights for each uh, investigation? No, don't shoot them out. Uh -uh. Shoot yourself then. Go for it. You know I'm teasing, you know, that no matter what you want to do, you do it. You know yourself better than anyone. You know your goals and your... Thessian just subscribed. Ahoy. Jesus. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Welcome in. 74 bloody months. Genuinely, but speechless to that. Holy crap! Thank you so much. That is insane. Thank you. Well, welcome in. I hope you're well. Maybe you're recovering. <laughs> Ooh, homemade burgers are good. That is true. Ice cream and soft drinks are also good. Enjoy whichever snacks you want, Ozzy. I'm not going to judge. Yeah, I had pizza just last night, so I'm not going to judge at all. <laughs> no worries, Ozzy. Take it easy. 
Bess, thank you again. Because 74 months is huge. And it hangs it up with me. And I know I say that nearly every time now, but I really don't. I hope you're well. I hope you're uh, recovered from PAX. We need to catch up. I know it's my fault. I've been hermiting too much. And I need to reinstall seven days and we can have a catch up. on Friday bolognese yesterday and today's goulash nice uh, I think I'm making a lasagna tonight I've not really been cooking this week because I've just been too tired um, and you know you, you don't cook when you're busy and tired and sick and no one has any energy in the house <laughs> but I'm gonna make some effort and make a lasagna tonight Stop being busy. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying, I promise. I'm probably going to end up being off work next week. Um, so at least I'll be around. <laughs> Here's up the last of tomatoes from the garden. That's fair. I've used up all my garden produce now. Um, I'm in the process of tidying up the the last little shreds of like sprouts and whatnot that have kind of gotten confused at the time of year <laughs> and I'm um, like in the process of cleaning everything out and resetting the soil and all that sort of thing um, so I'm gonna set up the beds I'm gonna try and sow some spinach just to have something covering the soil over winter um, but yeah, basically just resetting everything for winter now. I mean, I think up until yesterday, I still had some tomatoes on the vine. Like two little cherry tomatoes on the vine. The weather here has been weird. Very, very weird. Um, but yeah, I've enjoyed uh, growing stuff. I've enjoyed growing stuff uh, for the first time. I think I've learned a lot this year because this is my first year properly trying it out. I've learned what works and what doesn't with my little patch. So I'll be able to uh, do a bit better next year. with some uh, more consistent harvests and all that sort of thing. <clears throat> Learn by doing? Yeah. Definitely. My biggest restriction is space, because obviously I've only got a tiny little balcony to work with. Um, but it's been really cool, because I've been able to grow fresh herbs. So I think instead of huge amounts of produce, um, I might just have a really extensive herb garden. Um, and then just a few things like salad leaves or uh, beetroots or something like that like really simple veggies out there but I've got a whole rack of um, individual pots that I think I'm just gonna fill out with herbs because I've got already got stuff like lavender, thyme, rosemary all that sort of thing but I want to get some more um, interesting herbs um, some like harder to get hold of herbs I'm gonna try growing those from scratch and then just have two trays of like salad leaves or like I said simple foods that I, I'll just use every day, but not trying to grow much variety in terms of veg. I'm trying to focus on the herbs instead because they're they're kind of more interesting to me. But uh, 
that's the project for closer to spring, I think. At this stage of the year, there's not a lot that's going to be growing. Um, so it's kind of a, an easier time in the garden. Especially now it's, it's like, we've, I think we've probably had our first frost overnight. Or got close to it, so. Everything's gonna be dying back now. It's fine, you know, natural order of things. Everything has their season. It's always it's been really good to have my own garden, um, even if it's just a tiny little patch of, you know, pots. <laughs> it's been really nice. anyone else got any plans, anything they're working on at the moment they're looking forward to or excited about? Like, October's the busiest time of the year for me, so I've always got something that I'm, <laughs> I'm doing. Um, whether it is just as simple as turning over the garden or as complex as what I've got planned for this afternoon, which is working on, on a novel that I've got planned which is more accurately probably the backstory for the D&D campaign that I'm writing. But it is going to be novel sized. <laughs> Hoops! Your siren is gorgeous. Speaking of stories, your siren is gorgeous and her story is fantastic. And I love bits too. I love the screenshot you sent me of bits in Baldur's Gate. He is awesome. I can't wait to see how he plays out or hear about it if you've already started playing him. <laughs> it's good to see you, Hoops. How are you, how are you keeping? It's funny, I literally just said, uh, just started talking about the D&D &D campaign that I literally will be writing this afternoon. Or at least starting to write this afternoon. And it's like it summoned you. It was awesome. It was one of the people who has helped fuel this current... I don't want to call it an obsession because it's always been a thing. But this current motivation to write. Should I just try to murder an old lady with a piece of a... <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. I need to read that sentence again, Indy. Cherry just tried to murder an old lady with a piece of a poisoned mushroom hat. Who's, who's poisoned mushroom hat? Cherry is all the lady. <laughs> I have to clarify, because this is D&D &D and it could be either one. <laughs> and it's fully believable that Cherry has a poisoned mushroom hat. <laughs> Noisy love it. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to learn more about bits. I'd love to learn more about bits. But I, I might, um, with your permission, obviously, have a, uh, have Siren make a cameo in the story that I'm writing. Just a small one. 
if obviously if you're okay with that because I genuinely love her story and her design Two books in your head and then the siren. Yeah, I've got one that I'm working on, um, which is kind of a hybrid of the backstory to the campaign that I want to write and also just a full blown two book series in its own right. And then I've got a secondary one that is um, more dystopian, sci fi ish. Um, but again, kind of more, more young adult dystopian sci-fi, think like Hunger Games kind of area of fiction. Um, and then I've got like a series of flash fictions that I write. And that's just before all the Baldur's Gate 3 related stuff that I write as well, just because I need to get some of this out of my brain before it explodes. <laughs> But I got a series of flash fictions, which are kind of, they're purely just for my own, my own enjoyment. And they're kind of like, uh, letters I'll never send, you know? Um, and it's, it's a series of uh, one or two page letters to various elements and forces and people that you encounter in life. And they're, they're ridiculously highly personal and basically therapy. <laughs> um, but it's it's something I've been working on and it's it's just so good. How some mushroom addict adopted daughter, halfling druid who enjoys mushrooms. That is cool, Indy. That is very cool. I love that as a concept. Yes, uh, it's the stuff about Astra in the theatre that I would really love to... Um, reference. It, it wouldn't be a full-blown, like, story about Siren. It, it would be they encounter her and the theatre and some of the characters there. Um, just, like I said, I love her concept and I love her design. So my favorite movie for D&D? Rolls around Siren and another bounty hunter. <laughs> Shadow. That is awesome. His brother was also enslaved by Hell's family. Oh my goodness. That'd be so cool though. That'd be so cool. That is such a cool idea for um for you and your group to play through as well there. I, I, I just for me from like a player perspective as well as just as a GM I'd love to play that <clears throat> that's the sort of thing I love including and it's part of the reason why I love people who come up with um, maybe not like full blown novels of backstory but enough backstory that you can put hooks like that into your campaign because um yeah, some of the most rewarding interactions and encounters come out of it. But no, I, I'm writing a... It's not... The story concept is not groundbreaking. It's, it's a done concept. But the way I'm doing it, I'm hoping, is a little more unique. Um, and the, the characters that I'm using to tell the story, uh, at least in this book, I'm hoping make it a different take. But we'll have to see, won't we? <laughs> I've got... <laughs> I, I've got about a thousand words <laughs> down, so I need uh, another 119 plus to go. <laughs> 119,000 plus to go. <laughs> the back scroll with only those who can bear the mark and open it. Oh, so it takes the Shadowfell. <gasps> Ooh. Give me 
magician. Oh, wow. Oh, that is so cool. I'll try it out, please. Yeah, I, I wasn't... So I haven't fleshed out the idea fully. Um, my idea was to either encounter Siren herself or have, you know, my group, my story, encounter the theatre um, where obviously Siren would be. Um, I'm still very much in the early planning phases for the story. I was going to ask Asta, I apologise. Apologise, I didn't realise. Didn't realise even, oh my god. Words are tricky for me today. <laughs> Nicely related to the house. Oh my goodness. I had no idea. This is so cool. This is what I mean. As you're talking, my brain is ticking away in the background. And has been all stream, to be honest. It's ticking away in the background on this story that I'm working on. Because it's kind of, it's a lot like Baldur's Gate, but it just kind of has me at the moment. And then it's the the world that my brain wants to inhabit when the real world doesn't exactly appeal. <laughs> Let me know you on these. I will do, I promise. Um, but yeah, I've got the... Uh, <laughs> I blame the D&D uh, &D World Builders Journal for uh, kind of kicking me off into this story's realm. Because um, the story concept does take place in a a world very similar to Faerun. Um, just with a couple of twists because of course there's a twist. Taryn is very young. Yeah. It, it's partly that youth that is why the, uh, the theatre would be the best place for this group to encounter her. Without giving too much away, because they're not very well fleshed out yet. Um, but these characters are all going to be quite um, world-weary in their own ways. Um, so to have that kind of a, a brush with someone who is so very young and so like and has all these things going on even as young as she is yeah yeah 84 is still very very young um and i think having that brush with someone so young would have an impact on at least two of the because i've got about four main characters and they, they've all got different perspectives but at least two of them um one of them is a full-blown elf so that in itself would kind of um, you know kind of trigger some things in this this very embittered world weary um, elf just to encounter another elf, another elf who's so young and so uh, kind of out in the sharp end of things. Uh, I, I don't know yet, Hoofs. I don't know. Um, I ha like I said, I haven't really fleshed it out uh, yet. It was something I was playing with earlier of just more, more specifically the one character that I've got in mind to meet her. Because, you know, it is this elf that has been hidden away from the world. Very um, scornful of the wider world and the wider communities and just very much like I, you know, the world can burn, but then is kind of dragged out because of circumstances and encounters this very, very young, very both vulnerable and powerful elf. <laughs> and it's just this, this kind of, oh yeah, it, she would almost be a mirror to this older, older elf that I'm, I'm developing at the moment. He's like, this is what you could have been, but you decided to hide from the world. You could have been, you could have brought something wonderful out. Because as much as Siren has her, her problems, she also has a wonderful talent. <laughs> you know, she brings joy to people by singing and, and performing. 
and that 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 would some would definitely be something that would chime very strongly with this this character that I'm developing at the moment. There's a long way to go. <laughs> There's a long, long way to go. Uh, the World Builders Journal is uh, a full year's worth of writing prompts. I think if you haven't already used it, Hoops, I think you'd enjoy it. But it would be dangerous because it is very, very much, you know, you write the tiniest little bit for the prompt and now you're like, okay, now I need to spend the next three hours writing more because it's just got me going. But yes, yes, we definitely do need to to have a, a writing writing chat. It would be really cool. I've been watching a lot of um, Tom Deville's uh, streams because he talks about a lot of he talks a lot about writing because he wrote for for shows like Hannibal and things like that. Um, and just some of the stuff he's he talks about is like. It, it, my brain, it makes my brain tick over in the best possible way. And I'm, I'm so keen and happy and excited to be writing again. I cannot express that enough. Writing is my happy place. <laughs> I say that through a mouthful of paintbrush while I try and find another paint. Because painting's also my happy place. Um... I am vaguely familiar with it because I do know a bit about Cirque du Soleil but I'll have a look I'll have a look yeah Tom uh, he streams on let me just get the he streams over on this So he's he's found on Twitch there. Him, it's Tom Deville. Um, he also streams alongside Neil Newbon when they do their playthroughs. Lovely, lovely human being, both of them. But Tom is also a writer for TV. He's I think he also directed or co-wrote some. He he had involvement with Hannibal, um, which is one of my favourite shows. Um, and a bunch of other really amazing shows. Um, but he quite often just, he loves talking shop. So I, I often just sit and listen to him talk. Uh, I don't have the audio split at the moment. I'm sorry, Hooves. My, my audio setup's very basic. <laughs> but, um, I, I will be listening to it later because I'm going to be writing later, um, anyway. And I'll I'll pop it on then, so I get a good a good sense of uh, Siren, and I might write that encounter, or at least a draft of it. Let me close stream. Oh no, <laughs> sorry. Oh, I can't keep up with what t Twitch does with those things. But yeah, Tom's great. He's just my partner. Him and Neil together have raised over eleven thousand dollars for charity recently. Or eleven thousand pounds. I can't remember the currency they were using. Uh, got a lot of love for both of their communities. They're lovely, lovely people. Um, but Tom specifically talks writing a lot. He's also writing a novel at the moment, so he's great. He hasn't been really helpful in just being an inspiration. And he talks a lot about the realities of being a writer. Victor Soleil. Yes. So he's a writer. Tom is a writer. I don't know if he acts. Um, but he streams with a Starian's actor. Because um, they're just good friends. <laughs> like, they just know each other anyway. Um, and falling into both of those communities is one of the best side effects of Baldur's Gate. I could have never anticipated. But if you're interested in writing, I do recommend checking out Tom's stream because he talks about it a lot. Um, 
And he talks. He he gives a lot of really good advice, and he's he's good with just like if you if you go, hey Tom, I'm writing stuff. He'll he'll happily give out advice or suggestions or just like encouragement. <laughs> Love the stream from raffling his stream night, writing some of his D D story. That'd be cool. Uh, I don't know if I'm quite ready to be um, publicly sharing my writing yet. I feel like I've got a lot to learn and relearn about the craft. Um, but obviously, one of the best ways to to learn is to start. So I feel like I'm just gonna I'm gonna start writing. And I'm doing a um, narrative design course at the moment as well as uh, going to be taking on some just straight creative writing training at some point. So just crafting. Yeah, you, your ideas are great, Herbs. Uh, the flowers are great as well. Um, like, honestly, your Siren Doc just kind of read as an unfinished, like, obviously the prose is there, but obviously there's a lot of notes and kind of shorthands in there too, so just read as something that was still a work in progress. And that's not a criticism, it just, you know, it, I know there's more to be written there. <laughs> that's all. Your writing's good, very good. And it has the, I, just from me personally it has potential to be fantastic but I you know I can only judge from what I've seen which I from talking to you recently I know is only a very small amount ads oh my god ads are the worst sorry so yeah it, it read as um, a work in progress is what I was saying so it obviously it didn't feel finished because I know it's not. I know you've got more to add to it. <laughs> Repeat from that. <there. laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't stop the ads. I wish I could. But yeah, it, it read as a work in progress. That's all. And it's not a criticism at all because unfinished work is never going to be as polished as something finished. Um. But what was there was really good and the ideas were fantastic and I wanted to read more of it. I wanted more of the story. And that's the best compliment I can give. Like me wanting to read more is the best compliment I can give for writing. Because I have read ridiculous amounts. Like, I read voraciously, and I, I read wide. So, yeah. <laughs> if I want to read more of your stuff, it's, it's a compliment. <laughs> I, I genuinely think you, you could be a very, very, very good writer, Hoops. I'd love to read more of your stuff. Two sugar-free drinks and an ice cream and a coffee. So, Ozzy, have you ever had um, vanilla ice cream with coffee poured over it? Specifically espresso? Because that is amazing. <laughs> well, so welcome back. I'm glad you have snacks. Yeah, grab them on page one. Yeah, I, I am very much the same in my style of writing. I, I'm very much grab their attention, make them want to turn the page, give them a reason to keep reading. Oh, that was a drink available at Aussie Marcus. Fair enough. I actually had that first in Spain. Um, it's something that you can just get at like restaurants as a dessert. I think they call it affogato. I apologize if my accent's terrible. It's been a while since I've spoken Spanish. 
Um, but yeah, I it always sticks in my head because you can like, even get it at McDonald's over there. And uh, so good. So good on a warm night when you're tired and you've had a big meal. And you just want something sweet, but you also kind of know that you need to keep going a bit. It's because you mentioned you had ice cream and coffee. And like, put those together, that's a good time. And the place that I had it at, they also put a shot of amaretto in. So it's amaretto, vanilla ice cream, and a, a good, rich espresso shot. So, so good. Lost the files. Start at chapter one and give it to a friend. <laughs> That's so good, Hoops. You do, you have a real knack for hooking people. Um... But yeah, I, I like flipping flipping the script a bit. Uh, I like the um, the one of the ones one of the concepts I'm playing with. That I don't really have a firm plot for yet. Is like the person stood next to the spotlight, so they're not they're not the hero, they're not the villain, they're not the one who saves the world, and they're not the one who dooms it. That the person stood next to them. Um, and yeah just kind of playing around with the concept of being like adjacent to the spotlight and adjacent to all these huge huge events like what about the best friend you know the, the best friend the hero's best friend the one who got left behind at home who doesn't get the attention doesn't get the fame doesn't get the glory but yeah I, I can't basically yeah turning the support role into the spotlight role i like playing with that idea a lot um what was the thing i mentioned uh amaretto it is uh type that out for you it's like a, an almond uh liqueur it's alcoholic um but it's almond flavor so good it's very sweet Um, but obviously works very well with vanilla and coffee as flavors and it's mm, glorious <laughs> and it's kind of making me want one because I haven't had one in years yeah support characters are important too without support characters the whole thing falls over <laughs> but yeah kind of like a celebration of support characters but also just because how often do you hear about that side of things how often do you hear about the one who got left home? You know. Yeah, the heroes are doing hero things, but what about their family? You know, some of them don't have tragic family backstories. Some of them just have loving families waiting for them at home. Um, so yeah, I kind of want to want to play around with that idea, but I haven't got a good idea for the the rest of the world building yet. giant undead satyr fight for next Sunday. Nice, Indy. And welcome in. It sounded like you had a good session. It sounded fun. We're, we're kind of talking about like stories and food. Ozzy's got amazing snacks that's making us all hungry. I'm theoretically still painting this model. <laughs> but I keep getting distracted by chat. Honestly, herbs, fresh sheets, best kind of luxury. Mm. How did you like comment when she first introduced Siren to her nose? Oh, has my neck gone? Someone who wants to make a lovely family. So, yeah, I I kind of... I can do the tragic backstory stuff. But I love the idea of... Um, yeah, like I said. 
uh, the the hero who leaves behind a family who loves them. Because sometimes that's just as tragic, <laughs> you know. And who's to say that that family, that wholesome family unit, is going to stay together through all these um, adventures? You know, think about the end of the the Lord of the Rings films. You know, the Shire's still whole there. But it's not necessarily saved for everyone. And that concept has always stuck with me. Last connection? I don't know, Hooves. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think my, my net might be playing up. Uh, the, the comment was interesting, Hooves. I... I would need to go back and reread it to get the full context of it again because I my brain is full of holes. But it it is um it felt like kind of foreshadowing, maybe. I'm not sure. Like I said, I need to go back and reread it because I'm I'm foggy today. So this is just going off of a very unreliable memory right now. So I apologise if what I'm saying doesn't make much sense. I'm not sure I'm making sense to myself even. <laughs> Hen, welcome in. How are you doing? It's good to see you, Hen. I love it too. Cobbles! Husband and wife. Wife is an artifice, the husband is a druid. Ooh. Ooh, that's so cool. Hey, if you want any uh, tips from someone who you literally used to do backstage for theatre, um, assuming you don't need, assuming you need them at all, feel free to let me know. Because I love theatre. I'm actually potentially going to be going back into working at the theatre, which I'm really excited about. Because I missed it. I apologise for causing this whole earthquake there. But yeah, I actually used to work in theatre. So let me know. <laughs> uh, fun session? Nice. And you can see your dark, run, dark urge run even better. Whereabouts are you at with your dark? urge run in the witch act just being conscious of spoilers obviously because while I am very much fully into my dark urge run I'm aware that there are people in chat who haven't played yet migraine yesterday. I'm sorry, Anne. I hope you feel better now. Uh, I'm okay, thank you, Hen. I'm exhausted. <laughs> uh, and I say that not to be dramatic, but just because, uh, you know, that dang sickness. Uh, but otherwise, I'm good, thank you. Having fun, painting, Talking about my writing and Hoobs' writing and just being generally having a good time things. Oh, this is messy. This is not going to be my neatest character ever. Um, I'll probably have to tidy it up later on. Uh, all the lovely people yes definitely I, I will I need to get some rest before I'll be functional for uh, any sort of world building um I, oh story idea for Siren Siren and the like Cobbles tribal dance oh that's so cute 
Oh, that would be so sweet. I love that. Anisa's got just thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's funny. Um Lise is my, my Dark Urge character, for anyone who isn't aware. Um, the one that keeps popping up on my social media because I'm slightly obsessed with them. They were initially going to be the one character that I actually did the evil thing with. And I tried very, very hard to stick to it, but I made a couple of tactical decisions with it. Um, I didn't let any of the companions die because I wanted, I was basically trying to go for the worst possible outcomes um, for everyone. So yeah, I, I didn't want to, I didn't get Minthara because I didn't want to um, lose Karlak and Will and I couldn't work out how to make that work. Um, I don't know if it is possible to get Minthara without losing at the very least Will. I imagine it's theoretically possible. But yeah, I wanted to have Halson um, for just tactical reasons. Um, but yeah, at least, at least managed to, to have Karlak and Will and save the Grove, but in the worst possible way. <laughs> it was like, we saved the Grove, but at what cost? Because <laughs> geez. Um, but like near enough everything was not, is not good it, it was going bad and it was dark um and then act two came along and towards the end of act two there are a couple of scenes with certain companions and i'm being deliberately vague um but i'm all about the story in this game so the story kind of changed uh, very late on in Act 2 and there are some scenes with some companions where afterwards there was no narrative justification for my character to continue being evil other than spite um uh no sorry it is if there is if it's there I'm gonna try for it <laughs> um but thank you for the offer maybe DM me if you want to uh, just not in chat because I know there are some people who haven't played and I might spoil quite a lot for them But yeah for for least my dark urge my main dark urge I should say Act two kind of changed and now it's a very late game redemption Which is so cool because I never saw it coming And it also gifted me a scene that is going to haunt me for the rest of my life. Um, which involves my Dark Edge character and a certain vampire who they were romancing. And if you played the Dark Edge past, it past the end of Act Two uh, on a redeeming run, you will probably know which one I'm talking about. And if not, I'm not going to say it in chat. But that scene broke me in, like, the best possible way. And Hooves, you probably know, because I think you've probably played through it. Um, but yeah, just that scene alone kind of flipped my character. And it flipped my perspective a lot on things. Uh, on a personal level. And just after that it's like the the kind of trying to pull together the pieces of who they are and try and build some something good out of what they've got haven't done dodge yet oh it's it's mm, it's a good story i fully fully recommend dark edge once you've completed the main game because the story rewards are massive on that one leveling <laughs> that's fair no i um i have one lease who's my late stage dark urge redemption and then i have another one nox who yeah i have a weakness for three letter names in this game don't ask me why <laughs> uh nox who is just evil and you know she's got no car like she's got no will 
she's got Minthara, but like near enough everyone else is dead and they, they are not going to repent. <clears throat> this is going to be a full committal to I am going to make the world burn um, character. Um, I will say Dark Edge Assassin is rewarding. If for no other reason than it feels like the class they had in mind. But yeah. My evil... Evil is hard. <laughs> it's... I, I'm... My, my true evil, the true evil run that I'm doing, it's hard and it's kind of depressing. <laughs> I'll be honest. It's kind of depressing because you walk into camp and it's like, there's not even the Albert. I didn't even get the Albert cub. That's how evil I've gone. Yeah, everyone's dead. All these NPCs that you love over the course of the game, they're gone. Already. Yeah, and it's a full committal to awful, awful things happening to everyone. Um, yeah, it is truly the darkest timeline and it is hard to play because you get so attached to these characters. Uh, Shadow left you. Oh, interesting. You touch your side. Okay, bye. Oh, no. <laughs> My, so, Nox, my evil character, um, I'm not sure about power hungry necessarily, they, they are power hungry, but I think it's also, they are just genuinely, they enjoy causing pain, like, like, I think that's gonna be the concept for them, so they might save someone if they think there's a potential to destroy them later on. So it's, it's that capricious evil that I'm kind of playing with. The very, like, yeah, why did you do this? Oh, because I felt like it. But it's a horrible, evil thing. Yeah, and? <laughs> why did you kick the puppy? Yeah. It looked at me. <laughs> and it, oh, like that is very much against the kind of person I am as well. So it is definitely something that I have to think and plan on. But, yeah, Nox is just evil for, for the sake of it. Like, they, they've never had someone to tell them not to be because they, you know, there's nothing in their skull except murder and a tadpole. And they're just like, Meh. like, why should I care about anyone else but myself? And I, I can already see potential for this to kind of crack open like an egg. But... I'm, I'm rolling with it <laughs> and seeing where it goes. I'm just, I'm trying to get the bad outcomes because as much as I hate it, I also want to see those sides of the story. Just power hungry. That's fair. That's fair. Shemba's such a good name. I like that name. <laughs> I think I know what you mean, Hoops. <laughs> Which is probably a testament to how obsessed I am with this game. <laughs> no, I haven't gotten far enough into the game for Shadowheart to really care, but I can already kind of see the hints of the uh, not good outcome she's not gonna leave but there is an outcome that is going to have massive ramifications that is already kind of starting to emerge <laughs> if you know you know yeah yeah oh i just saw your dm pop up 
um, for the trick. Uh, I did hear that. I'm not sure if it's a bug. Very similar to the sheet trick. <laughs> that I keep hearing about. And again, if you know, you know. Uh, if you don't, uh, I'm not gonna say exactly what it is due to spoilers. Please don't say it in chat because spoilers. But you can look up the sheep trick. Just the sheep trick Baldur's Gate should probably give you the right answers. If you want to know for yourself. Or DM me and I'll tell you. But I'm fairly sure it was a bug. <clears throat> Sheep, as in uh, the animal. It, it's a very similar, it's basically a way to trigger that uh, using something in game, herbs. I don't know if they patched it already or not, but yeah, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I think you found it. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure it's a glitch, um, but it's still pretty funny. Um, ignore my piles of shame. I need to find a particular paint that's getting hidden. <laughs> that may or may not have been some unassembled tyranids. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. I know exactly which one that is, Hoops. And because I know who it belongs to, I don't mind. <laughs> I was going to do that on Nox, but I forgot and accidentally triggered that area and that incident without the appropriate preparations. I just decided to roll with it in the end. I'll do it at some point. Command drop on over weapons? Oh. Oh, that didn't occur to me. That's pretty cool. Command drop is a suspiciously powerful spell. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I think. It's something that's not always necessarily appreciated, just how strong it is. Weapon glitch equip them. Okay. 8 to 26 damage. Jeez. Finding use for fading death. I mean, hmm. The only way, the only reason I've ever used feigned death is because I really wanted to keep someone alive. Um, and the AI kept targeting them. 
there's a fight in Act 1 that you can use it, I think. Um, and one in Act 2. Uh, not Act 2, Act 3. Where I wanted a particular character to stay alive for reasons, but I didn't want them to be taking damage, so you cast Death Ward and then Feign Death. I think. It might have been the other way around now. I can't remember. But yeah, it kind of worked. <laughs> and then I realised in Act 3 there was there's a particular spell that just kind of makes it cheesy. But I'm not going to get into that because that is a major spoiler for a major thing. So, yeah. And then you can take their stuff. Oh yeah, that too. You can take people's stuff when they're pretending to be dead. You could also throw potions at sleep. <laughs> Tactician has that in basically every fight. I've not played Tactician yet. <laughs> oh, damn, that bricks. Getting in the way. Welcome back from the ad break, folks. I apologize. Everyone keeps fucking missing or dying. Ah, is uh, is Bit still on the Nautiloid, or is this a different fight? Because that sounds like my attempt uh, on my sorcerer on the Nautiloid, which was just infuriating. I had to repeat the fight about four times. Ad, I'm sorry. I try. I'm trying not to say anything important during ads. <laughs> Certain gift potions that paralyze those who hit. Oh yes. Oh yes. <laughs> Hello, Karlak. Yes. Um, honestly, uh, a lot of the time I'm throwing those potions asleep uh, for pickpocketing purposes. Because it's just funny. Like, being an assassin rogue, you obviously get quite a lot of sneak. And uh, with being high dex as well, sleight of hand's pretty, pretty nuts. Um, obviously it's not as good as if I was a straight up thief. But it's pretty up there. And it's not exactly a challenge to pickpocket anyone at the moment. I imagine it will get harder once uh, we reach Act 3. But at the moment it is laughably easy. So I'm just finding all these weird and wonderful ways to annoy people while I do it. Which usually involves throwing something at them. And while they panic, steal their stuff. Because a lot of my characters are very morally corrupted. Dark urge or not. <laughs> D&D is fun. It lets you play things that you wouldn't normally play. <laughs> Never accidentally drank one? No. Nope. <laughs> not a certain suspicious health potion? I mean... Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Disguise self or fog cloud is great. But for me, <laughs> well, okay, for my characters, part of the fun is the potential to get caught. So I don't disguise 
Unless it's something that I'm actually trying to steal for a purpose. If it's just stealing because money, I don't disguise. Because it's funnier. And I try not to use stuff that blinds. Because again, it's kind of kind of similar effect to disguising. Like I, if I get caught, I want them to see my face, and if I don't get caught, I want them to see my face laughing at them. <laughs> Basically, that's the the in-game justification. I just like the challenge. Me personally, it's a game. You know, consequences. Fully buffed. 110 HP and AC 31. What class was she playing? What class was she at? I imagine a rogue, but jeez, that is a lot for a rogue. Or did she multi in the end? Ah, uh, arcane tricks. <laughs> oh, yes, health potion. It's good for someone's health, we just don't know whose. Um, arcane tricks said that makes more sense. That is impressive, either way, though. I mean, I think my first playthrough only like Karlak got that sort of cracked the 100 plus because Lazel unfortunately did not get as much of an opportunity to develop in my first playthrough. For unspecified reasons. Plus, my first playthrough, I didn't think things through as much as I wanted to. Or I should have done. So. This one, people are getting better gear and better outcomes. Gale, Shadow, Karlak. All at 100, 100 plus. Damn. Yeah, the bone. I missed the bone spike on my first playthrough. I, mean, I still did it because my warlock was ridiculous at that point but it wasn't like it wasn't particularly impressive it was just done if you know what I mean yeah I'm doing better this time around having two assassin rogues in your party is a good way to clear up fights quickly <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> like, I'm just sat here like this is this is silly. Like there's the, there's no way. Like narratively it makes perfect sense, but <laughs> mechanically it's silly. <laughs> so I'm able to create like 16. Yeah, that's always fun as well. That is always, always fun. Low, lowered crit scores are great. And they are so strong at Baldur's Gate. Execution, paralyzing crit, into car like next to siren. Oh my god. <laughs> Oops. That is amazing. Now we just got Assassin A and Assassin B going down each side of the area, and it's just one down, two down, three down, four down, like all the way down.
big mob fights just turn into fun. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, sick. Level 6 spell charges are also great. I do know the tower, yes. Yeah, I assumed you meant Act 3 tower. What D&D subclass would I like to... Uh, so D&D class and subclass, Circle of the Moon, Druid. I want a shapeshift. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I want a shapeshift, Ozzy. So, Druid, and then give me all the shapeshifting. Give me all of the world shapes. One round? Damn. Nice. That's awesome, Hoops. That is awesome. Karlak's amazing. Karlak is my, my inspiration for how I want to be as a person. <laughs> uh, I, I love the ability to talk with animals. Um, D and D jurors can also talk to plants, which would be cool. Just because the idea of that is so abstract that I just I would love to try that. Um, and yeah, just the idea of being a real like all the wild shaping would be great, and just being. Yeah, you know, one with nature is is great. I love that idea. So yeah, I'd be a druid. Or if I had to pick a different one, a uh, death domain cleric because Caduceus Clay is another inspiration. <laughs> so it would just be Caduceus Part Two. <laughs> Mama K is amazing. We we love Mama K here. Uh, sapphic coded non-binary icon Sam Bayard as well is also fucking phenomenal um no no Ma Mama K um yeah she's great Oh, I'm glad she helps you with that hoops for me it's like um I I've always admired and looked up to more um muscular women and I wanted, wanted that for myself, but never really had the confidence because it's like, well, yeah, I don't know. And then just, just seeing how much everyone loves Karlak and just how she deals with her story as well. I don't know. Yes. I, need, I need to embody that more. And Grave. Oh, he might be Grave, actually. I can't remember. But yeah, I'd basically just want to be Caduceus. <laughs> I, I like the at one with nature kind of vibe that a lot of them. Um, the transmutation wizard. Oh, that's cool though, Ozzy. Go for it. I mean, to be honest, the main reason that I'd want to be a, a druid so that could just wild shape into a bear and bugger off. Bears have the best life. They get to sleep six months of the year and then eat the other six months of the year. <laughs> like, sleeping and eating are great. <laughs> Monster woman, yeah. I, I look up to a lot of very strong women um, and non-binary individuals too. Very strong femme presenting people, I should say it that way. It's more inclusive. Um, and more accurate. And it's like, I've admired them and looked up to them and I want to embody that myself. But um, I've got a lot of barriers in the way. <laughs> Mental, physical, whatever you want to call them. And just, ha I don't know, having someone as good and pure as Karlak who I just immediately fell in love with. Just kind of clicked something in my brain. That's good. This whole the whole game is a gift. Honestly. 
Flood is a special place. Hope for change. Oh, I can see why, Ozzy. I can see why. Um, for me, Caduceus is absolutely like by far and away my favorite Mighty Nine character. Um. It's just the, the like, I can't describe it. <laughs> I don't know, it just something clicked. I love Caddy. I hope he's there at the live show. I missed him in the other reunion. <laughs> don't get me wrong, I like who was there instead, but my boy, <laughs> I missed him. And the Blooming Grove just sounds beautiful. Yes, I also cried at that fight. I I know. <laughs> Sorry, Nightbot's being a pest and won't turn that timer off even though I try. I apologize, Hoops. That was not, not a direct thing, it's just a timer. Nightbot. I know what you mean, Hoops. It's cool. But yeah, um... This is kind of turned into a just chatting stream. Because... <laughs> I can't, I can't do any more on this model. My hands are shaky. Um, and it's kind of finished, mostly. I'd say it's like 80% there. It's got a lot of tidying up to do. <laughs> he was watching. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this up for those who wanna see it. You're gonna go, it's 10 p.m. Honestly, I think I'm gonna go to, um, I'm gonna end it here for today, I think, because I am really exhausted. Um, and I'm just gonna, gonna relax. <laughs> I'm gonna have a weekend. I'm gonna do some writing. Uh, maybe have a nap. Because chronic illness sucks. And it's kicking my backside left, right, and center. Uh, I don't think I saw the Hero Forge tubes, but uh, feel free to send it. I don't know. I can't remember. I'll check. I'll look back in Discord and I'll check. But thank you. And thank you everyone for stopping in. Um, the resubs, the lurks, everything. I really, really appreciate it. I'm sorry if I'm out of it today, but I adore all of you. Thank you. Thank you for being amazing. Um, I'm hoping I'll be back, mostly back to normal next week. Um, <laughs> I'll check it out, Hoops. Thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I'll be back up to normal next week. But thank you all very much for bearing with me. Thank you for keeping me company. I hope you all have a wonderful day or night, wherever you are in the world. Um, take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And I will see you all very soon. Bye for now, folks. <laughs>